Welcome back to the Webby and O'Neill channel. Thanks for joining us for today's video. Hope you're all having a great weekend. We thought I'd do a video on Scott McTom and his recent comments on the High Performance Podcast on Eric Ten Hag. Smash a like on the video to help support the channel, Reds, and get involved because we want to know your opinions. Now, he started off McTominay on the manager, saying the manager is so demanding, he's got so many high standards that the whole squad has to apply to, which I think is brilliant. I think that's the way it should be, especially when playing for a club like United. We all have to act accordingly and be professional in what we do. Tenag is massive on timings. Everyone being in the same and looking similar in terms of group tracksuits. All of those things contribute towards a good team in terms of no one having a big ego. No one having a big ego, sorry. Everyone being in it together and pushing the right way. Well, it sounds to me like Scott McTominay is uh, saying we've got high standards here because of uh, Eric Tenag being here. In other words... We, we didn't have him. He's raised the standards. He's trying to raise the standards, which is, you know, par for the course. That's what should be at Manchester United, high standards. And it sounds to me as though he's catching up Scott McTominay and he's lacked the high standards from previous managers uh, within the squad. Uh, has been poor. We know that. Uh, and he's just trying to raise it. Eric Ten Hag is trying to praise him, but wearing the, the same tracksuit and things like that, you know, uh, don't wash with me. I think he's just covering for the lack of standards what has gone on for a long time. And Eric Ten Hag is trying to raise the standards. We all know that. Uh, and he, sh he should know that. Yeah, he did mention Scott McTominay, come to think of when you're saying about standards previously. And it was in a Champions League press conference when he was with Ten Hag. And he said in previous dressing rooms, it had actually become toxic. How do you think he's performing at the moment, Scott McTominay, especially this season? Scott McTominay, uh, to me, couple of games, plays all right. And then uh, he, he just goes under. Uh, squad player always said that. That's how he should be used. I don't think Scott McTominay will be here uh, after the summer. He was going to be moved out uh, in the summer anyway. So I, I think he'll be moved on. I think it's just trying to be nice words from him to Eric Ten Hag. But the reality is Scott McTominay is just a squad player. And to me, he's got no long-term future here. Yeah, I know you, you said and reverted back to the summer where you think that he, he was looking for a move, but that was only reports because he has become a big influence in Eric Ten Hag's match day squad and especially in the 11 this season. Yeah. Is you that say, just down to injuries that have happened throughout the squad? I think that's the lack of uh, quality and depth in, in the squad, to be honest with you. Uh, I think uh, if we'd have had more players or able to get players in in the transfer window in the summer, I think he would have gone. Uh, I think United wanted to use the money for him and Harry Maguire mm. uh, to get to get another player. Uh, so, uh, to me, Scott McTominay uh, will be gone. He's not the future of Manchester United. I like him. I think he's a decent player. But for United standards, going forward, not for me. Top goal scorer in the Premier League, though, this season with five goals. Without them goals, you look especially at that Brentford game at home. Yes, they have been important goals. Uh, and thank God for that. He's put the ball in it. But, as we've seen lately, he has missed a few. Yeah, what, what do you think of his actual role in the team currently, where he's like, he's a bit further up the pitch, more like box to box, especially trying to arrive in the box late to try and get on the end of crosses and get the ball in the back of the net. Seen it late on against Tottenham. I think Could Scott, have scored the winner, couldn't he? Yeah, he could have scored the winner. Scott McTominay is someone who, who drives forward. Uh, and unfortunately for him, he struggles to get back. Uh, and that's been highlighted and people have pointed it out uh, that he struggled to get back and track a player. That's his failings. He's tackling. I, I like his tackling sometimes. Defensively, when he's in the box, clearing out the crosses with his head and that, very, very good. But, unfortunately, I don't think he's got the legs, the speed, the intensity of Premier League football now. I think uh, that's past Scott McTominay by. There's so much he can do, and then there's so much he can't do. And that's why I label him as a squad player. Give me one Scott McTominay over 10 Anthony Martials and maybe one or two others who are still in that squad because... You can always say about Scott McTominay, he does care about Manchester United. They all say they care about Manchester United, and quite rightly so. Uh, but the thing is, he is part of uh, the legacy of United, players coming through and who have gone the other way. They've gone the other way. The standards have dropped. His standards dropped. He's talking about standards now. But the thing is, your standards should never drop. You're playing for Manchester United. So at the end of the day, mm. his downfall is his standards have dropped. He's not 
put the uh, performances in on the pitch on a regular basis like he used to a few years ago. Mm -hmm. But now, no, standards have dropped and he, he's falling by the wayside and will be out in the summer. Yeah, I just want to go on to another snippet of what he did say. Obviously, he did mention about his time under Jose Mourinho. He also alluded to Marcus Rashford as well. But I just want to concentrate on what he says on Eric Ten Hag. And he says, he's an amazing manager with great tactical dimensions to his game. Some of the things he says and how he conducts his meetings are brilliant. And I just want to be a part of that. So he's basically saying... Like, he's an amazing manager <laughs> and I want to be a part of the future here at Manchester United under Eric Ten Hag, but you seem to think he won't. Listen, amazing managers are people like Alex Ferguson, Sir Alex Ferguson, mm. Pep Guardiola, Arsene Wenger, just to name a few. They're all winners. They've won things. They demand to win. You can't call a Carabao Cup an amazing achievement. It's not an amazing manager. I, I, I find that absolutely astonishing comment an amazing manager and I think people will look at him and sort of like go what are you talking about an amazing manager nobody even who knows Eric Ten Hag would call him an amazing manager but given time though Eric Ten Hag and the right resources with Ineos coming in hopefully could he get to that status of being an amazing manager <laughs> it's a big if isn't it really yeah. you know if he does this if he does that mm. you know he doesn't know that we don't know that. Mm. And at this moment in time, he should be calling it for what it is. He should be calling Eric Ten Hag. It's a tough job he's got. And I wouldn't like to be Eric Ten Hag. Mm. You know, he's had a load of problems. He's not creating anything on the pitch. Uh, what, what kind of football is on the pitch? We know the difficulties with the squad, the chaos on and off. We know what's going on with certain players. They like to throw managers under the bus. I would have preferred to hear things like that. Calling out players who yeah. haven't performed, who are letting down Eric Ten Hag, not calling him an amazing manager. I mean, I want Eric Ten Hag to stay here at least another year, right, to get through this and see if he can push it. You know, you'd use the word flippantly, amazing manager, if he stayed for next year and got us through this crisis, mm. right, and improved what we've seen this year. Mm. I would call that amazing. Yeah. You know, that, but to say he's going to be an amazing manager in the future or what he sees of him now, no, he can't, he can't say that. And if, if you're amazing, then you've created and achieved things. He's not achieved mm. anything in the eyes of any Manchester United fan. Mm. And I, I just find that incredible, uh, what he's saying there. Don't get me wrong, this isn't no criticism. I think it's just blatantly for us all to see. But yeah. he's not on them levels as your Klopp, your Pep Guardiola, etc. But do you think he can actually compete with them in the future? Given the right tools, given the right backing, uh, giving the right people uh, in the positions. And when I talk about the right people in positions, I mean inside the club. So you've got to wait and see what tools he's mm. given. Mm. I don't think he's been given any tools. I think he's been hung out to dry. He's the one always facing the media. He's the one always trying to bat off what the press want to say, the media and all that. So given the right tools by having the right people uh, behind the scenes, having a CEO in there. Yeah. And every, a sporting director sporting to work Sporting director, along as well. everything else like that. Because so, he's not had them tools. He's not had the proper tools. He's not even really had a proper striker, has he? I know we've got Hoyland in, but he's a young lad, big price tag. You know, you look at last season, he was giving Wegos, you know, Ronaldo, all that drama that went on. So really, we could do with seeing an actual centre-forward in there as well to help out with Hoyland, but a proven one, and let's see how we get on. Yeah. Uh, Plus maybe one or two other positions at least. You talk about centre-forward, Eric Ten Hag being given a centre-forward. We all know that it should have been two, three centre-forwards here at Manchester United. That's the tradition. That's the way. You can't score goals with one centre-forward. As I said the other day, mm. uh, one, one minute, that's all it takes. Injury, bang, you're gone. He has not been given the right tools. He has not been given the right backing. Uh, and he is nowhere near amazing. He's just a man right, at this moment, who was like swimming in the deep end after having two lessons at swimming, right? <laughs> That's how I see it, you know. He's fighting for his life here, yeah. fighting for his life and to be called amazing. I, I don't understand any of what Scott McTominay is actually saying. Mm. Uh, he's not saying what should be said. He should be coming out fighting on behalf of Eric Tenard. So is this like... Saying, 
people have let him down yeah. in the change room, players, and he should be naming players, not coming out uh, with drivel like this, because that to me is what it is, drivel. He has in recent weeks, Ten Hag, made, well, made a big point, put a real emphasis on when he does get his fully fit players back that is uh, currently out, like your Casemiro, your Martinez, your Shaw, your Mason Mount. We will see performances improve, hence then getting the three points more regular. Would it be amazing if Ten Hag then got us into the top four and that's where we finish this season? Of course it would be amazing, but it's, uh, to me it's unachievable and I think everyone out there will be on the floor flabbergasted right, uh, thinking that we can achieve a top four position. Think what would be good, I wouldn't use the word amazing, what would be good if he could stabilise the rot, what we're seeing on the pitch. Uh, I'm able to move forward mm. with a plan, with the people in the right position, getting a top four. That's way, way out the uh, scenario as far as I'm concerned. Ten Hag has called it. That is players, I want them back. You'll see something different. That's why it's all gone wrong. He's actually nailed himself to the mast by saying, once the players are back, things will improve. And if they don't improve, then what's his route? Mm. So, you know, we're going off the conversation and the statement of uh, Scott McTominay. Mm. And it really, he should have just come out saying, this manager needs the backing of all the players, backing of all the fans. We can fight our way yeah. through this. Backing of the club as well. Backing of the club, not talking about mm. tracksuits. We're all wearing the same tracksuits and things like that. Mm. It's just waffle. Uh, he should have come out fighting uh, on behalf of Eric Ten Hag and not turning around using absolutely ridiculous quotes like, this is an amazing manager. Yeah. Typical, like, kind of PR for social media sort of comments, do you think, then? It's waffle. Just yeah. pure, pure and utter waffle. Okay. Uh, and it's not an in-depth interview, I, I grant it. But the thing is, he should have known better than that. He should have come out fighting for the manager. What does he think about Eric Ten Hag? Mm. Well, what I think about Eric Ten Hag, he's had a rough deal. Some of these players here at the club, mm. what have gone and what are still here, have let him down and aren't backing him and aren't putting the effort in. And they should do. And it's a disgrace. I'm doing my best for Eric Ten Hag and so should the rest of the players, but he didn't do that. Yeah, well, he clearly in that uh, interview wants to stay at Manchester United under Eric Ten Hag. So it'd be interesting to see how he gets on from now until the end of the season and if the start of next season, whether he's still here or not. But that's one for us uh, to wait and see. Yeah. I thought I'd do a quick overview of uh, Scott McTominay's comments on Eric Ten Hag, what he made on the High Performance Podcast this week. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, just smash a like on the video, help support the channel, and we'll be back on Monday with another video. Enjoy your Sunday, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank you.